One of the great gifts that has been passed on to those of us in the Christian faith has been the lessons of inspired teachers from the past. Throughout our history, especially when we are moving through times of historic transition, much as we are today, God gifts us with teachers and leaders who ask us questions that help us find our way. One such teacher in one such time was Dietrich Bonhoeffer. In a time of great transition and in a time of great wrong, in the days of the Nazis in Germany, there were many questions. But Bonhoeffer believed that he needed questions that gave way to the old questions, new questions, questions for that moment. For Bonhoeffer, the question was not, who has Christ always been? But who is Christ now? Don't tell me who Christ has been before, and don't tell me what Christ did way back then. What is Christ up to now? As I was reminded again this past week of the importance of asking questions, I found myself asking my own. The question for me was, what does Easter mean now? After all, we did Easter last week, and we did it pretty well. We all alluded our way through two pretty wonderful services according to the critiques I received. And over the course of Holy Week, welcomed over 700 worshipers to Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, the Easter Vigil, and Easter morning. And that's all well and good. But here we are on the Sunday after Easter. Many have gone back to their normal Sunday practices, which do not include worship. Some may be scratching their heads and wondering why we're still singing Easter hymns and carols. Some will be puzzled later on this morning as to why there are still lilies and azaleas in the sanctuary. Isn't Easter over? Well, maybe a better question might be, what does Easter mean now? Not only for this Sunday after Easter, but for those of us trying our best to live as disciples and to remember who God created us to be and how God created us to live, maybe we need to ask, what does Easter mean for us here and now in 2010? What is Easter up to right now? Well, one thing Easter may mean for us in new ways is the end of fear. There was a lot of fear around the resurrection of Jesus. Fear of the Romans, fear of death, fear of the religious folks who seem to be gaining great power and influence. Maybe there was even a measure of fear that Jesus wasn't really dead, but had somehow or other still managed to be with them, and they had not performed well in those final days of Jesus' life. But there were the disciples hiding behind locked doors, according to John, and that just smells and then add to that the fact that when Jesus needed them the most, they ran away in fear. They couldn't even stay with him when the tables turned from Hosannas to crucify him. They ran away and hid, not unlike those first people in the garden who hid from God, perhaps not so much because they were naked, but because they had introduced fear into a fearless world. I'm not sure that kind of fear was something God gave us. In creating us. It could be that we have remembered fear and forgotten trust. But there they were, hiding, hiding in fear, cringing in cowardice, dying on dread. And what happens? Jesus suddenly came and stood among them, says John, and my hunch is that if they were not afraid before, they were really afraid now. What would Jesus say? What would Jesus do? Their fear and anxiety and worry must have reached fever pitch. And what did Jesus say? Peace be with you. Not an angry indictment. Not a condemning diatribe. Not a damning judgment. Peace be with you. Put away your fear, Jesus says. Put away your brokenness. Put away your desire for retribution. Put away the past hurts. 
put away your guilt, peace, blessing, wholeness, everything that is good and right and just and holy, and everything that calls forth the reason God created you in the first place. Peace be with you. And John tells us, the disciples rejoice. And maybe that's one of the things Easter can mean for us now. Maybe a takeaway from Easter is that we don't need to live in fear anymore. Maybe Easter can remind us that we were never meant to live with fear in the first place, but Jesus' resurrection is a reminder, unlike any other, that we don't need to live in fear. The power of sin and death is broken, and not only can we remember who we were created to be, we can now be those people. As the sticker on the snowboards at the extreme games proudly proclaimed, no fear. We can now have an extreme discipleship that proclaims no fear. And we can rejoice. After blessing the disciples with peace, Jesus continues to bless them by saying a word of forgiveness. Jesus offers them unconditional pardon, a complete absolution. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. Jesus himself came on a mission to forgive and to help people remember who they were created to be. And Jesus now sends his disciples on that same mission. He sends them out as forgiven people who live as forgiven 